When we travel on the road, the easiest way to find the destination, if we are not that sure of the place we are going, is to make use of GPS. Once I was having a leisure walk in a city, not in the USA, but somewhere, I saw a big building. It's a church. The name of the church is Way to Heaven. So I went closer and I found those big words, Way to Heaven. And in little small words, small letters, open on Sundays 10 to 12. Life doesn't have clear-cut, easy answers. We find answers to various life issues by facing them, by journeying, we make the journey. Most of the times, when we feel the distance of God or the absence of God in our lives, we are challenged. We begin to have so many questions. We almost get into despair. Then, we try to cook up certain solutions on our own. It's very human. That is how we face life. In trying to find solutions on our own, we mess up our life. We find so many situations like that in our attempt to find solutions on our own. We get into further troubles. But for someone who is in difficulty, casually, usually, we tend to say, don't worry, you will be fine, it will pass. It is easy to tell such a person, but only that person knows how difficult that person is at the moment, going through what difficulties that the person is going right now or right then. Jesus uses such similar words in the Gospels today. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your hearts be troubled. It is similar to the words that you and I use for others. Don't worry, it will be okay, you will be fine. When Jesus says, well, not to worry, we begin to trust if a person is in control of that situation, or if such a person assures us of something, we have confidence. So Jesus is God, and he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in me and trust in the Father. He has been speaking about God, the Father, in a so convincing way that the apostles, especially Philip, thinks, well, he says, Master, then show us the Father, that will be enough. Because Jesus is so full of the Father and explaining about the love of the Father, the power of the Father. And Philip says, if we have that Father, if we can see him, that's enough. Then Jesus says, well, I am the way to the Father. He doesn't say, well, take this way or that is the way. But Jesus says, I am the way. He's very direct. Is very personal. And his words are trustworthy. 
he says that he is the answer to all our life problems. In fact, one examiner, he was correcting the exam, the, the answer scripts. He finds a student who did not know it was a maths paper, and the student did not know the answer, and he had written, Jesus is the answer. Then the examiner had commented, not for this question. Jesus is the answer, and he directly and personally tells us, meaning that God cares. Most of the time we think that our problem is bigger than God, but we have a God who is greater than any other, any other problem. We are made aware that you and I are in his plans, that he cares for us. But the question we need to ask is whether God is in our plans. When we make plans, we need to ask that. So uh, a deeper bond is called for. When we are deeply in, united with him, then we will experience what happened in the, in the first reading. There were issues, but coming together as a community, they were looking for answers in the early church. Similarly, even in our lives today, whatever the difficulties we go through, we are reminded that he is the way, that he is the answer, that God cares for us. Let us find our way like the GPS that leads us to the destination. By living the day-to-day -day life, we experience him not only after our death, already we reach our destination on the, on the way. Let the Holy Spirit inspire all of us to experience his presence always in our lives.